3D programs can be intimidating, but I'm about to teach you the most user-friendly. Boom! One-click outline. Easiest to learn, round the corners and extruded. Web-based, free app which takes your 3D scenes to the next level. It's called Spline and this video is sponsored by them. Come on, let's make this popsicle together, you can do it. Go to spline.design, you can download it here, but it's not necessary because it works in your browser. Get started and after you're logged in, click on new file and you get some instructions right away. But basically alt plus left click drag to rotate the scene. Scroll for zoom and hold down scroll to pen. Switch between perspectives here or with M. But if you forget it, you can check everything here. This top bar is mostly for adding new objects. The right panel is for all the settings and the left one is for managing the objects. Let's make this popsicle. Are you ready? Yeah! First of all, delete everything and change the background color to f aka white. The next step is to add reference images, which I included in the description below. Just drag and drop the front view image first and scale it up by dragging one of the corners. If you hold down shift, it keeps the original shape. If you hold down alt, it scales it up from the center. And if you hit alt and shift, it scales it up like this. And this is what I need. Let's add the side view and scale it up too and move it with this arrow. A new challenge is incoming, we need to rotate it. Grab that green thingy and you can start seeing numbers and hearing voices. If you hold down shift, it will snap to every 5 degrees, rotated by 90. By the way, you can do all the previous transformations here as well by dragging or typing the numbers manually. Let's move this back to make some space for the popsicle. It's time to add some objects. Let's make the stick first. Click on the rectangle here and grab it. Right click and reset the position. Now it's right at the center. Adjust the image to the stick and then the stick to the image. I'm holding down Alt while grabbing the side. This way it scales down on both sides. Adjust the top and the bottom. To make the corners round, head over to the shape settings and increase the corner slider. Switch to arc, which gives us a half circle. Now all the corners are rounded. Next step is to give some depth to it. Switch to side view by clicking on the red dot. Adjust the image again and extrude the shape with this slider. But now the stick is no longer in the middle. Switch the snapping to grid and if you move it, the stick sticks to the center. So if you see that red cross, you're good. Tweak the image till it's roughly aligned. I said roughly aligned. Look, what a nice looking gentleman. Ok, so change the color in the material section. In other words, let's add some humor to the situation. This is the worst one ever. <laughs> Click on it and select the eyedropper. In the left corner, you can see exactly which pixel you pick. This should be the industry standard color picking in my opinion. When you pick the color, something right. it's because you have a lighting here and the object has shadows, that's why it's darker. So click on this eye icon to disable it. Now it's perfect. Let's make the cream. Add the rectangle and snap it to the center, or just reset the X position. Then adjust the width and the height. Round the corners, put it in place and extrude it. If the slider is maxed out, just grab the object here. Move it to the center and bevel it with this slider, and increase the resolution with the slider underneath. Disable lighting and pick a color. Duplicate it with Ctrl D and move it down. Change the snapping to object and the two flavors are perfectly aligned. Change the height and the color. Next flavor, same thing. Duplicate, snap, height. But the bottom corners should be rounder. How do you do that? Double click on it and we are in this edit view where you can adjust the individual corners. Select these two points and you can adjust the corner size here. Change the color. Do this with the top flavor as well, but if you want to make it even rounder than the slider possibly can provide you, just type a bigger number. Spline thought of insatiable people like me. Change the color and look, you've made a pretty cute popsicle already. Be proud. Let's take this to the next level by adding outlines, which is quite an easy task. Add a rectangle and place it close to the popsicle. Move it to the center and adjust it to the reference image. Extrude it out and switch to edit view with double click. And apply a different roundness to the top and the bottom corners. To turn this grey object to an outline, disable lighting and click on this arrow right next to the color. Here you can change from different looks. We need the outline. And boom! One click outline. Click here and you can adjust it further. Let's set the width to 4 and pick the color. It's looking good. Now let's do the same thing for the stick. 
duplicate it, make it wider and longer and apply the outline. Change the color and the width. Oh yeah, and don't forget to change the depth from the side view. It's time to add some magic to this popsicle, but to make our lives easier, let's do some object managing first. Select the stick and the outline while holding down control. I don't know why I named it straw. Anyway, hit Ctrl G to put them in a group and rename it with double click. No matter what the name is, as long as you know what's in the group. <laughs> nice save, bro. To select multiple objects at once, select the first and the last while holding down Shift and Ctrl G again. Let's call this cream. When you are done with that, let's continue adding some details. Add the sphere, but hold down Shift while dragging to make it uniform. Make a few different colored spheres. Let's put them in a group and move them inside the top flavor, but we don't see them. Well, no shit. I'm about to show you a trick I call magic transparency, which makes the objects see through. Select the top flavor and scroll down to the visibility settings. There's both, front and back. We need the back. What's going on here? Only the back side is visible and the front side is invisible, so we can see what's inside the object. Maybe with this texture it's easier to understand. Okay, get rid of this Z fighting by pulling that face up a bit. It's time to populate this object with spheres. It's gonna be easier to select them if you hide the outline with this eye icon. Now it's time to put what you've learned so far into practice and fill the space with spheres by yourself. But let me tell you another shortcut for faster duplication. Hold down Ctrl and drag the object. When you are ready in front view, randomize the positions inside view. Make it more interesting with stars. Click on the plus icon and select star. Drag it while holding down Alt and Shift. After a quick color change, tweak the star a bit, discover the settings. I'm gonna apply a bigger corner to the outer points and a smaller one to the inner ones. Extrude it out and give a bevel to it so it's nice and smooth. Add a few stars here and there, randomize the rotation and don't forget to randomize them inside view as well. You can rotate them so it looks more organic. Unhide the outline and you can adore your work. We are getting there, keep it up. Let's make this middle flavor crunchy by adding triangles to it. Click here, triangle. Drag it while holding shift. Make the corners round and change the color. Squish it a bit. In the original artwork I placed them manually, but I'll show you a feature that generates them for you. Scroll down to the bottom and enable cloner. This clones the original object, duh. You can increase the count and the position. But how do you randomize it? Well, enable randomness. When you change one of the values, the positions of the triangles are randomized. Move them down and hide the base triangle. Increase the count, randomize it on the x-axis as well. Try a different seed value, change the movement maybe and rotate them. Tweak it till you like the outcome. If you are done, duplicate it and move it to the other side. But where are they? Remember the visibility settings? Well, click on back or both, so they are visible from both sides. Let's add triangles to the side as well. Duplicate this and disable cloner, cause I'm gonna show you a different feature. Move it to the side and rotate it and place it somewhere. We are not just gonna simply duplicate it, because if you decide to change the corners, or the color for example, it would be inefficient to change that for all of them. So we gotta turn this object to a component with right click. When you duplicate it, it creates an instance of the same object. They are both triangle 3. Let's move the instance and if you select the component and change the size, the corner or the color, it changes to the instance as well. Make sure you select the object, not this collection, when you want to change something. Duplicate it, put them in place, rotate them and you have multiple instances linked to the same object. Put them in a collection, duplicate them and place them on the other side. Let's rotate the whole thing so we can see them. Flip it so it's not that obvious we cheated. The only missing things are the highlights and the stars. Let's make the highlights first. They are rectangles and I applied outlines to them. The width is 3. Make sure you put them in front of the main outline, otherwise the outline doesn't show up. Add a few more and don't forget about adding some to the backside too. Let's continue with the stars. Before that, put everything in a group and rotate it by 30 degrees, so we can place the stars around the popsicle. Add the star and change the sides to 4. Crank up the corner and I scale up on the y-axis a bit. Apply the same material we used on the highlights by right-clicking and copy material. Then right-click on the star and paste material. Let's put it in place. Before I duplicate it, I want to apply an event that makes it look at the camera all the time. Add an event with this plus button. Click here and select look at. The target is the personal camera. Click on display button to go into the final result mode. And when you rotate the scene with left click, the star never shows its back. 
To get rid of this quick spin, go back and change the tilt mode to stick to target. Now the star is always in the same position. Cool! You can duplicate it and make some star clusters here and there. Give some randomness to their positions. The event is duplicated too, so check them out. They look great. You can also make them look at the cursor, if that's your thing. You know what's missing? A shadow! First of all, add the ground plane. Reset the position, bring it down and scale it up. The next step is to add the directional light. Move it up and we have a shadow. Place it somewhere till the shadow looks a bit more interesting. I want to make the rectangle white, but the shadow purple. How do I do that? Make the rectangle purple first, then select the light and increase the intensity till the ground is white. Bars, baby! This realistic shadow doesn't look good in this flat shaded scenario. So select the light and turn off penumbra. I love this word. Penumbra. 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 If you go closer, you see that the shadow has low resolution. I'm not worried because there's a solution. Bars. Select the light and change the resolution to huge. Look at that crispiness. I changed the blur to zero. Move down the plane so it looks like the popsicle is floating up high. But I'm not a rapper. What? Some Reddit users said that the star shouldn't have shadows, and they were right. So select them and scroll down to the shadows section. They shouldn't cast shadow, so click on no. And now if you click on orthographic mode, this popsicle looks kinda pretty cold. <laughs> Take a moment to admire your work. By the way, if your scene is rotating off-center, then hover over the gizmo and click on reset. This resets your camera and now the rotation is perfectly in the middle. Now admire, admire, admire. But don't go anywhere, because the best part is yet to come. Which is turning this simple scene into an interactive experience. And no, you don't have to know how to code or any complex thing like that, we are talking about spline after all. So the plan is simple, when the popsicle is clicked, it rotates a bit and the music starts playing. Let's go! But first you need to do something, make this button shoot fireworks. The popsicle should rotate 10 degrees when it's clicked, let's make that. Select the popsicle group, add a new state with this button. You got two states, a base state, leave that alone, and a state where we rotate the popsicle by 10 degrees. Rename this state to rotate. Now if you select the base state, it goes back to the original rotation. The mouse click will transition between these two states. But how? Add an event and change it to mouse down. Which means action happens right away when you click on something. Add the transition action. Open up the settings. The target is the popsicle. When a click is performed, it transitions from the base state to the rotated state. Let's try it out. So when I click, it rotates, but when I click again, it doesn't rotate back. To make that happen, turn on toggle. Try it. Back and forth, back and forth. Great! Make the movement more dynamic by changing the transition curve to spring. Looking much better. To make it a bit faster, set the stiffness to 100. Perfect! Let's add the pop sound when it's clicked. Click on those dots next to the sound file and choose a sound. If you have a spline subscription, you can choose from more. This pop sound is good. Try it out. It's so relaxing. Let's add the whole vibe to this scene by adding music. Add the new sound and click on upload. I included a track in the zip file besides the reference images. Upload that and change the loop to infinite. I also changed the toggle to pause, so the popsicle will act like a pause and play button. Let's see. Okay, it works. What if you want to share this scene with your loved ones? Well, click on export and here's a shareable link. Before you copy it, update it with this button, so you share the current state. If you want to make it public and share it with the Spline community, click on share, publish, continue, fill in the infos and then publish. Go into the community tab, click on your profile and you can see it here. Let me congratulate you because you completed this tutorial. Drop this emoji in the comments so I know who didn't give up. Now make the popsicle feel like yours by adding different styles from the material library. Come up with something fun or realistic. Don't be afraid of discovering it by yourself. Thank you Spine for sponsoring this video.